you go. You're live. Good evening, St. Joseph and friends. Good evening. Good evening. We'd like to welcome you to another midweek Bible study. Yes. Hope all is well with everyone. We pray for you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the ones coming, the ones that maybe just have to stay at home. We continue to remind you of Hebrew writer says we should fail not to symbolize ourselves together. Why? We should love God and love each other. That's right. And then embrace the loving the fellowship. We want to thank you. Hope that all is well. Marie, for you hearing these names on this prayer list. Starting with Brother Samuel Ballinger, Sister Jason Beasley, Michael Sean Boatwright, Sister Alberta Bowden, Brother Willie Braggs, and Sister Annie Tooks. Brother Terrence Brooks, Sister Carolyn and DeAndre Campbell, the youth, the children's youth department ministry, Cora Clayton, Sister Mary Cure, Pastor Richard, Teresa David Curry and family, Sister Patricia Fairbanks, Brother Hobart Fitzpatrick, Sister Otha Frazier, Brother Otis Glover, Brother Ivory Godwin, Sister Michelle Grooms, Antonio and Stephanie Hackley, and Brother Leonard and Sister Tammy Hackley. We want to, uh, for your acknowledgement that Sister Tammy has gone to be with the Lord. For our understanding, she's going to be having uh, next Saturday a, a home going, and, and Friday she's going to be having a viewing. We'll get back with you more of that information, but Sister, we want you to pray and solicit for the strength of that hacking family, please. Amen. Amen. We got Sister Sarah Hawkins, Vanetta Jackson, the jail ministry, the Jefferson and Pearson family, Brother James McCount, Brother Adrian and Stanley Limbert, Sister Phyllis Luckett, Tandalia, Tandalia McManny, Brother Larry McKenzie, Sister Delphine Mitchell, Sister Hilda Myers, Dasha Peterson, Brother Bentley Porter, Lawrence Raheem, Sister Brenda Sapp, Sister Bertha and Natalie Scott, Deacon Marvin Simmons, Carmen Small, Sister of Teresa Curry. I understand that she's doing well since Curry called me today and let me know that she, uh, Sister is home. And, she just been taken uh, back for to some doctors up for him, but she is doing well from the surgery that she did have. Brother Richard and Easter Sneed, Contrilla and Daryl Jr. and Shalithia Springfield. Brother Michael Vanessa, Shikari and Trey Sutton. Bobby Tucker Jr., Sister Hattie Jimzette and Brother Quint Wallace, Kadeek Williams, Linda Wright, and D'Angelo. Mark. Read for you during the night out of Proverbs, uh, the 29th chapter, uh, the 25th verse reads thus as it said, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever put up his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Grass withers and the flower does fade. The word of our God shall last forever and forever, brothers and sisters. And that is the word of God. Father God, we come this evening with humble hearts, with thanksgiving for what you are doing, even right now, Father God. Because you told us you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And we thank you so much for that, Father God. To know that you're always in our presence, in our present help in the time of trouble. We ask you to please forgive us, Father God, of our sins. And I put it down. May not go hindered unto your hearing, Father God. Please forgive us, Father God. We pray mighty for these names that we called out this evening on this prayer list. They're all your children, Father God. You are all of our creator and our sustainer. You are is, you is our present help in a time of all trouble. These names are your people, Father God. We ask you in the name of Jesus that you breathe your will over them. And bring back to your church, Father God, as you will, Father God. Continue to keep us in prayer for all of each other, Father God, in love. Father, we 
pray for the man of God that you have chosen for St. Joseph Michigan Baptist Church, Dr. E.C. Gregory, Father God. We ask you to lift them up. Now the Holy Spirit just have his way in teaching us this evening, Father God. What does us say is God. Thou art all to become not just his, but become great doers of your word, Father God. To this in Jesus' name we do pray. And for Christ's sake, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Specifically, as he guides us through the teaching of his word. So glad to see those that are here tonight, praying that God will bless uh, all that are in the hearing uh, voice and, and pray that, uh, uh, that we stay prayerful and, uh, for God, for he will uh, bring to our hearts, as we study his word, what is pertinent to guide us in our Christian walk. Believe it or not, even though we are studying in the Old Testament, it is still profitable, you know, for our learning, for our growth. Uh, everything that God shows us in his word strengthens us uh, from day to day to be believers and to, to know what God would have for us to do as he carries us through this, through this life. Uh, tonight, we're going to start up at uh, verse 46 of chapter 2 of Daniel. And again, we are building the case uh, that God is setting up to show us uh, how he is going to set up the world uh, from the time that Daniel uh, falls on his knees praying that God would vindicate himself uh, all the way until the end time that God has in mind for his people. All of this we can find in the book of Daniel. And we can also find excerpts in, 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 in the book of uh, Zechariah, uh, in, in, uh, in the New Testament, uh, in the book of Revelation. We find parts of it in, the, uh, in Matthew chapter 25. We find parts of it in, the, uh, uh, in Thessalonica, uh, Thessalonians. Uh, uh, so we find it there. It's, it's all over scripture. God has written and given us the last chapter. We don't have to wonder about how this world is going to wind up. We know how this world is going to wind up. Mm -hmm. We're not worrying about no oh, astronaut, not astronaut. What is it? An asteroid coming and busting things up, you know, and all that. That's been in the news lately and all that. You know, God is in control. Amen. God has written the last word. God is going to take care of whatever there is to be taken care of in this in this world. And so we ought to be comfortable in Him trusting him, that, that he has not only our lives in his hand, but he has the, the, the world in his hand, everything, you know, uh, a great God that, that, uh, uh, that, that we serve, a great God that we serve. Uh, looking at chapter 2 of, uh, of Daniel, now what we have seen so far uh, in 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 this uh, in these chapters, we, we've seen uh, Nebuchadnezzar as he has been, matter of fact, obedient to God in going and capturing the Jews from the land because of their disobedience. Uh, and we found out that for the Southern Kingdom, one of the main reasons why he did this was because of their misuse of the land, not, not, not keeping the Sabbaths of the land. Now, now, all of that has everything to do with God and with the Lord Jesus Christ, especially when we started talking about Sabbaths and, and all of this, the, uh, God's rest. All, all of these things uh, come into in, in, uh, uh, to importance. But because they were, they didn't trust God in, in being able to be stewards of what God had, had left man in, in charge of, God took them into 
captivity and hell and we will see that God holds the Jewish people into captivity for the exact number of years of Sabbaths that they were disobedient and not kept. The exact number of years, 490 years, which are 70 Sabbaths. You know, 70 Sabbaths. You know, every 70 years being a Sabbath. They were supposed to work the land and provide from the land, and then on the seventh year, they were to let it rest. Well, they weren't supposed to plow it up and let it rest. You know, in the country today, when they let the land rest, they plow peanuts, whatever that's, they, they brought on it, they plow it up under. So it'll, if it spends the time, it's spending the time fertilizing the ground. God didn't tell them to do that. He wanted it left alone so that whatever was growing or even going wild on it, that the poor could glean from it. God always had in mind the poor. You know, during times of prosperity, they were not to glean the corners. They were to leave that for the poor to glean from. And then on the seventh year, they were to leave whatever it is, whatever it was that they grew that year before, you know, and then they harvest. They left it. They didn't plow it under. They left the land as it was so that the poor could sustain themselves. But they were so greedy. They were so greedy. They wanted it all. They didn't want the poor to have none. They, they wanted it all. And, and so they, they disobeyed God and, and, and not seeing what God had in mind. And I know on their minds it wasn't because of I'm not going to feed. They can't do for themselves. I'm not going to do for it. Same mess we have today. We got this crazy thing in, in, in our minds that uh, we won't uh, see about the poor. We won't help them in any kind of way because we feel that they got to do for themselves. Well, that's that, that's between them and God. Right. You know, I mean, I won't get into any kind of political argument there or any moral arguments on whether right, wrong, or whatever. But when there are people in need. It, 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 it's incumbent upon those whom God has blessed to be a benefit, not, not a deterrent, not, not, not someone to be judging. God will do the judging. But if he's blessed you immensely, there's, no, there's a reason why he's done that. Not because of your goodness, because God don't bless according to your goodness. He blessed according to his mercy and according to his grace, which means that he has other things in mind, not you. God said, "I, you know, no, I, you know, I, I have respect for no person. No person says higher than the other in my sight, you know. But, but, but Israel was they, they just misused what God had blessed them with, and so God now is taken, has taken them into captivity. And so the story is going on, highlighting specifically the four Hebrew boys, because they were the epitome." Of, of what God was lifting up as to uh, uh, the blessings when it comes to the, the youth and also the value of what Nebuchadnezzar wanted. He also wanted what was endowed in those four boys. The wisdom and their knowledge and their strength and, and, uh, and, and everything that made them princely. Everything that made them men that could uh, be leaders and rulers and, and people that were involved in making decisions. So, 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 so the world, which is uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, the world system, was taking what was of God, which was of, Drew, of Israel, and want to use them for the world's purpose. And we see God's hand in the midst of this because Whatever, even though the world may grab it, God is still going to be in there making his name being known. And, and even though the world system may grab you for a while, God's, God's picture is going to be seen in this. We'll, we'll get to that. Yes, ma'am. Did I hear you correctly when you said that Nebuchadnezzar were led to capture the Jews? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Was he aware of what the he, that was just something that was he did because of their riches or God did it? No, 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 no. A beautiful question. That, that's what all of this is about. God put it into his heart 
to first, because he made three visits, remember, to Israel before on the third visit he did the, you know, did the conquering. So God led him to Israel to, to whet his appetite to see what was there. All of the valuables in the temple and, and all these valuable young people uh, that were there that could be, could be, uh, uh, could be uh, taught and, and, uh, and, and fitted for, for, to be leaders within his kingdom and also to be, be puppet leaders you know, in, in, in governments that he had conquered. See, because the whole idea during the time when, whenever these, these empires were conquered, they would set up puppet or what they would call straw. What we would call today straw, uh, straw leaders or straw emperors or, or people that look like us but really had the conqueror's program in mind. Then the people would be more willing to follow, you know, be more willing to follow. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. I started to say something, but I'm not going to do that. With that. <laughs> isn't, it somewhere, isn't, isn't it somewhere in Daniel when he, he called Nebuchadnezzar his servant? Yes, we're going to get there. He, okay. See, he keeps working with Nebuchadnezzar. See, the other picture that I want you to see in this, see, Babylon is, not was, is still the greatest uh, nation that ever existed. Babylon is the only nation, King Nebuchadnezzar was the only king that ever ruled over the entire inhabited earth at any one time in history. No other nation has, has, has accomplished that. That's why in the dream, Daniel saw him as being the head of gold. If we look at uh, the, the chart from last week, the head of gold, Nebuchadnezzar, and Babylon. The chest for that, for that, uh, for that image was silver, which was the Medo-Persian. Then the, uh, the belt was bronze or, or brass, uh, which was uh, the Greeks. Then the legs of iron was the Roman, you know, and then further down, you know, were the lesser nations. Even we are considered the lesser nations. You know, if we were to put us somewhere in this in this chart, in this uh, idol, United States, we would be somewhere like the ankle. That's how unimportant, or, 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 or I won't say unimportant, but as far as conquerors, that's where we would wind up in the scope of things, okay? That's where we would wind up if we were, if we were seen at that time to be part of that, of that dream, okay? But to answer your question, God led Nebuchadnezzar to conquer his people. But Nebuchadnezzar went too far. <laughs> he went too far. And we'll see all that as we progress in our study. Good question. Good question. Verse 46, chapter 2. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel. Now, why, why, why again was he worshipping Daniel at this point? Because Daniel, I mean, good Lord, here this man going to tell me my dream. And then interpret my dream, and then tell me I'm the head of gold. You know, I mean, Daniel wasn't wasn't uh, uh, how you say he wasn't setting him up. He wasn't uh, flirting with him. He wasn't uh, well, how would you want to say it? Uh, patting him on the back, pumping him up. That was what the dream, what God was showing. And so Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, he was full of himself at this point. I'm the head of gold. You know, and, and, and this man is telling me what my dream was and telling me, you know, that I'm the greatest of them all, the greatest of them all, and so forth. So he turns around now and he's missing that 
the God of heaven, Jehovah, yes. is interpreting the dream through Daniel. Right. Right. He's missing that. He's not hearing when Daniel is telling him that. So when Daniel does it, he immediately goes to him to worship. And, and that's no different than the day. That's the problem. People want to worship the prophet rather than God. They want to worship the pastor rather than God. Whether they say it or not, their actions show it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the pastor, the prophet moves out of the way, all kinds of habits bust up. And, you know, and, 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 and if you could see it in a spiritual manner, every one of them got shovels out in the graveyard trying to dig him up. You know, I'm talking about they love God. But they walk around with, with crazy, crazy types of testimonies. And I don't want to go there because I don't want to bless nobody, you know, I mean, openly or whatever. But people still, no different than back then, will see the work that God renders through a man, but they miss God and they see only the man. And they want to worship him. They want to give him all the credit, all the glory. Yes, and this is what Nebuchadnezzar is doing to Daniel. Yes. 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 <laughs> so King Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face. Look at this. The king, the greatest king of the greatest nation, who is the head of gold of all of the earth creation of the earth, is prostrated. Is that, and yes, before a, a eunuch slave, before a eunuch slave, not even a full man. But I don't want to take no credit from Daniel. I mean, Daniel was was still a man, but I mean, in front of a, a slave. Okay, and worshipped him, worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet uh, odors to him. In other words, start sacrificing on their altars yeah. all around in high places, sending up, you know, the fresh odor of burnt meat, burnt uh, fat to be exact. Mm -hmm. The best part of the sacrifice to the greatest God was the fat of the meat. And, you know, even, the, well, I don't want to go into that, but when you're barbecuing, even today, even today <laughs> when that fat is cooking on that barbecue oh, grill, oh, boy, oh, and it gets hot, start to smoke, that, that's the best yeah. smell of yeah. yeah. the other, other meat. Yeah, that grease stops falling. That grease stops falling, yeah. yeah. And all you see is That's it. And so the fetid calf, or the fetid part of the, of the sacrifice was to the greatest of gods, and so they were sending a great aromas and everything up to uh, to Daniel. Phew, gracious boy. <laughs> Verse 47. Uh, the king answered unto Daniel and said, of a truth it is that your God, capital G, Jehovah God, is a Jehovah God of demon gods. Mm -hmm. Little G's. Mm -hmm. Of demons. Jehovah is, is Jehovah yeah. over demons. Because don't don't you know don't, don't get it wrong. You know, I mean it, it's easy for us to say, well, this is much easier to read because we know there is no God but God. But even God himself will will claim the fact of little G gods. There are demons yeah. out there even today yeah. that we worship. Right. Money. Sometimes our spouses, yes, children, grandchildren, jobs, positions, you know, all those things are, 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 are demonic centered because it is drawing your attention away from the one true God who is Jehovah. It draws us from putting our total trust in him. I love you, Jesus. Yes, I do. But keep my bank account healthy because if you don't, I can't keep my mind on you because I'm worried about my finances. What do you have just said? You have just said that there is a little God that must stay in place for me to be strong enough to worship God Jehovah. Once we say that, we have placed the little God ahead of Jehovah God. Whatever it is, name it. Whatever it is, yes, we have placed it in front of Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. 
And do not think that God don't see it. And don't think that he's going to let it slide. Somewhere down the road, because he says in his own words, I am a jealous God. And I will not allow you to have no other God over me. So he's going to do one or two things. He's going to trip you out of here, or he's going to get that God out of your life depending on what purpose he still has for you. One and two. If you're truly a child of God. If you're not a child of God, you're still playing around and trying to figure out where you are in the spiritual walk. You know, you may slide for years because God ain't interested in it because you're not here in a way. You're still scratching on the dirt trying to find out where you are in the scope of things. But if you are truly a child of God, God will not allow another God to come in your life and hit him and he not respond in some way or another. <laughs> and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Let me give you a little bit of scope when you're studying the scriptures, especially the old scriptures. You know, God is identified in this written Jehovah God, Jehovah God, Yahweh, and he's mentioned as God. Whenever you see see other references going along with God when he's speaking of and Lord, like I said, and Lord of Kings, he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father is Jehovah, but Lord is Jesus. He's talking about the personality of Jesus Christ, so he's identifying God, Lord have mercy. He's identifying God, Jehovah, and also the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether he knows it or not. See, God can even have Satan worship him. Matter of fact, he does. Whether he wants to or realizes it or not. God is in control of it all. God is in control. God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. See, if he was talking about our regular kings like he is as a Lord, it would have been a small L. That's right. Okay. That's right. But he's talking about Lord, deity Lord, right. over earthly kings. He is really doing some testifying here, but he still hasn't crossed the threshold yet. He don't even know what he's saying. He don't know what he's saying. <laughs> he don't know what he's saying. He still hasn't gotten there yet. <laughs> then the king, Nebuchadnezzar, made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the court of the king, in the gate of the king, in the court of the king. He sat in a prominent position. To sit in the court of the king means that he had a seat that was next to the king. Which is saying that at this point here, Daniel was second only to King Nebuchadnezzar. God was doing, you think Nebuchadnezzar was in his mind? God was setting this up. He was setting this up. He was slowly setting things in motion. Nebuchadnezzar didn't even figure out what he was doing because if he did and I'm going to jump ahead a little bit then he wouldn't have put Daniel in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright. Didn't mean to jump ahead but I, I just want to let y'all see. You did it. So 
verse 49. Then Daniel requested, oh, we did that one, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, now we go into chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar now is so full of himself, he's going to make this, he's going to make this, this image. But, but I want you to notice something. He does not make this image according to how God gave him the vision. Remember, you, you have it there in front of you. You have the, you have the, the yes. all of you have that, that, that sheet, don't you? I did. You didn't get it? I don't get it. Okay. Let's see here. But Nebuchadnezzar has gotten even bigger. Instead of him acquiescing, instead of him humbling himself, right, right. seeing what God Jehovah and Lord over kings, that's that, that, that's 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 Anne. He's right back up in the verse, he's speaking of God of gods, Jehovah of Jehovah over gods, and a lord of kings. He's, he's, he's speaking dearly. dearly. He's, he's saying stuff he has no idea of what he's saying. What he's saying. But yet still, he is so full of it until now he's going to project himself as the whole thing. The whole thing. He cannot stand the part of the image that says that from the gold, there is a, uh, a silver chest and a bronze waist and, and iron uh, legs and all this kind of stuff. He, see, that, that to him, is that, that's not worthy of this great king, this great God. He's a God, remember, of himself. He is a God, a little G-O-D himself, according to his people. Yeah. You know, so all of it must be representative of who he is. So look at what he does. Chapter 3, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold. You see anything else? Yeah. You see anything other than gold? No. He made an image of solid gold whose height was three score cubits. He made 90 feet. That's exactly what three score cubits is. He made a golden image representing himself, 90 feet tall, nine feet wide. And he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Now, according to archaeologists and so forth, they found evidence of it, not the full thing, but it was of solid gold. It wasn't gold-plated. It was solid gold. It was all of gold. I put it that way. I don't know whether, you know, sometimes you're like chocolate bunnies. It'd be all chocolate, but yeah. inside maybe. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. But the image was of all, all gold. There was nothing else with it. And, and there's speculation that it was solid gold. Because remember, they had peeled all the gold off of the walls of the temple. Everywhere there was gold and whatever, they stripped it and took it off. So he had, not only in his own treasury, but of the treasury of what he stole from, from Israel. All this gold and jewels and silver and so forth. So, God, he's really thinking that, that, that he's above all and there's nothing that can ever come to him. There is no, 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 no nation of silver. 
How in the world? And the Medo-Persia was a small, as a matter of fact, it took two of those countries together to make the country even worthy enough to speak of, you know, to even take on Babylon. And they did it very sneakily, and you know, well, we know God gave them the wherewithal to do it. and positioning us for his purpose, we will still exalt ourselves higher than what God is doing. We do that very same thing today. Yes, sir. Why do you think that some that, well, I don't know, well, yeah, you know, build these huge cathedrals and these, these huge monuments to themselves, you know, Forgetting about displaying Jesus. Yeah, in their services, they may mention him every now and then. They may talk, but, but the biggest emphasis on, look what I have accomplished. Right. Yeah. Right. Look what I have done. Under my pastor, look what I have done. I'm a TV evangelist. I, you know, I've got millions of people that are following me. You know, I, uh, through all of my stuff books that I'm writing and everything else. I'm making a million plus a year and so forth. I'm this, I'm that. When basically God called them to pastor. God called them to do certain things, but they have pushed themselves like Nebuchadnezzar did to be the center and people can't see Jesus for the gold, for the gold image, the golden image. Verse 2, then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent together together the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the judges, and the treasurers, and the counselors, and the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province, pro provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Then the princes and the governors and captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together into uh, unto the de uh, uh, dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations and languages that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet the flute the harp the sackcut the psaltery the decima and all kinds of music you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up and whosoever falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackcloth, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. All except Daniel's friends three Hebrew boys. They refused to worship. Wherefore, verse 8, at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews, the three Hebrew boys. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, sackcloth, psaltery, and decimal, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. Now, now who again set, got the king to do that? 
those who were jealous of Daniel and the, and the Hebrew boys. They went to the king and whispered in his ear. The king won't worry about that. He, won't, he, was, he was had his mind too much on himself. You know, he wasn't even thinking about that. But, Well, listen, the king, again, wasn't, wasn't concerned about them. Again, his mind was all set on himself. Right. You know, building this image, you know, of, 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 of himself. But these men, these, these, these other uh, uh, magicians and, and soothsayers and sorcerers and all of them, they were jealous yeah. of them because these guys had moved their importance out of the way. Yeah. You know, moved them just, they just, 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 just quiet down. They're not getting the, the attention and the money and the best seats in the king's court any longer. So they go start whispering in the, in the king's ear and saying, you got the image up there. Now, now you are God. Now, remember that. In Babylon, you are a God, O G O D. Now, that image is you, so you need to have them worshiping you. Not, not Their mind wasn't set on the image. It was on worshiping the king, which the image represented. Okay. So, verse, what, verse 11. And who, whoso falleth not down in worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou uh, hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image, but thou hast set up. See, they, they are going to the king in a roundabout way, what they are saying to them, they are not recognizing you as a god by saying they won't bow to the image. And the image is King Nebuchadnezzar, who is a god. So they, they, they are trying to inflame the situation to really attack the Hebrew boys. That's who they were after. They could care less whether they bow down or not. You know, they could care less about that. These three boys, when the whole kingdom was going to... You know, they had in mind of getting these boys out of the way because they were messing their position up with the king. They said, you step up. That's right. <laughs> Same thing happened to their jealousy oh, of people within. Oh. You know, they, 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 they will do things to, to, to bring you down rather than striving, trying to do what's good in the sight of God. It seems to be easier to tear them down. Yeah. And thinking that once that happened, then automatically... I'm brought up into promise. Right. And that's not how God operates in his business. He doesn't. God oversees everything. Sometimes I don't believe people realize or know that there is a God. They can't, they can't with their minds devising such things as that. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they can't in their right mind believe that there is a God who sees everything, but yet you're thinking you're hiding your hand when you're trying to destroy someone else's reputation or trying to destroy someone else when God is working with them. I, I, I can't imagine that they believe that there's a God. Either that or they mentally crazy. <laughs> Something's wrong. Something is wrong. But it exists. And I'm going to tell you why it exists. Because Satan is still busy. Amen. Satan can take the best of us. Don't think that none of us are above Satan that's right. coming along and getting you to do things that's displeasing to God. Yeah. You know. So they're after the three Hebrew boys. Now, verse 13. Uh, Daniel's friends, they 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 they, they trust God. That, 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 that's who they're trusting. They're, they're not uh, the, the three Hebrew boys are not trusting Daniel to come in to see for them. They themselves are showing that they will be trusting God. They're trusting God in this business. And boy, they make a statement that even the nigga just sets my spirit on fire. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll get to it. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage, 
and Fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the, of the cornet and the flute and the harp and the sackcloth and the psaltery and decimal and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fury, a fiery furnace. And who is that Jehovah, capital G, who is that Jehovah God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Boy, he is still putting his hand up to God, ain't he? Still, still. <laughs> who is that Jehovah God? I mean, call him by his name, you know. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But here's the one that I like. I love this verse here. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So it don't matter what you do, it don't matter. Whether he delivers us out of it or not, it don't matter. But I'm not going to serve your God. I'm going to serve Jehovah and Jehovah only. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fear. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. His attitude changed. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army, the most mighty, the biggest, the strongest, the tallest, the most burly men that was in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> it is, uh, the furnace was so hot yeah. until when they, the men, that the big burly fighting men that bound them and went to the open of the furnace and threw them in, uh -huh. the fire yeah. slew and killed them. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, that's he right. He was mad. He was mad. Yes. He was mad. He was turning heat up. That's right. That's it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Everything. As a matter of fact, at first, he wasn't even into it at all. But because of of these naysayers, these haters, these, 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 these ones that were basically against what God was, was doing here, was at his ear. He got furious. Called him difficult. Called, yes. He got furious. I remember that message. Yeah. <laughs> but that's even in life today. You can yeah. go out today, yeah. you're on a mission, yes. and you hear somebody, you know, you have people saying that this and that in your ear, and you mm -hmm. get so mad, and you turn and look the other way, and then thing you know, you know, you know, be kind of messed up, or now you got to go for it. That's right. So, you're so right. 
That's why you have to be all so careful about those who are whispering in your ear. Yes. 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 Even with St. Joseph and talking to some people, some people, uh, they don't even know why they left here. Mm -hmm. They don't. No. They don't know why they left. Right. But there were those that were whispering in their ear that at that moment it sounded like a compelling argument. But it was only for that moment. Yeah. Don't get it wrong. This was 700 years ago, 650 years ago when all this was, no, 650 years before Christ. So that's uh, 2,650 years ago. But it's still happening today in almost the same kind of way. Mm -hmm. Satan doesn't change his mode of operation. Right. Why? Because it works. It works. <laughs> and we are too weak to, to, to fight it. And the reason why is because we're taking our eyes off of God. Mm -hmm. We're taking our eyes off of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we're placing our eyes on the situation in front of us. We're placing our ears on what we're hearing rather than what we know is true. So where were we? 20, 21, okay. No, no, no. No, we didn't go. 22. Oh yeah, 21, okay, 22. Now we read that, okay. 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fire of furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Yeah. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. Walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Wow. So what now? And, and you keep seeing him saying those things. How is that possible? Yes. It, it just shows you, and I, and I like to use that as an example every now and then when I'm preaching or, or, or teaching, that when you're in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, even if you're in the midst of a furnace, that even the smell of the smoke or the, the, the singe of the smoke won't even get on you when you're in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your safest spot, the sweet spot, is always in his presence. And if you all were in the seminary, I would carry you a little bit higher here because the seminary and theology says that God pours all of his blessings on his son Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can visualize it and see this platform where Jesus is standing on, that's where we want to be if we want to receive the blessings that yes, God has for us. Yes, sir. But since you're not in the seminary, I won't go with that analogy. I'll move okay. on. Okay. So, let's, let's go to verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Now, Wonder why the king wasn't consumed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't part of God's plan. Because I'm pretty sure it was still hot enough uh -huh. still to, to, to get him if, 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 oh, if, if that. There you go. There you go. There you go. And God still has a purpose for Nebuchadnezzar. God ain't through with Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar has a great plan, I mean, a great testimony for us near the end of all, all of this. So God ain't through with Nebuchadnezzar. And that's the other thing. Until God through with you, you ain't got to worry about a beer truck running over you. Yeah. Until God is through with you, 
you know, you're going to be okay. You know. Verse 27. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors began being gathered together and saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Nothing, as if they had never been in a fire that was seven times hotter than it normally said to be. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God, here we go again, Jehovah, capital G, the, the, the Jehovah God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, still he's not claiming him, is he? Either the, the, the Jehovah God of Daniel or the Jehovah God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He hasn't claimed that, 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 that claimed him for his God yet. That's right, yet. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and blessed be God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and that word changed there is frustrated. Who okay. frustrated the king's word. In other words, the king was working and saying one thing, but the naysayers biting on his ear was, 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 was frustrating him into doing what he did. He didn't want to really do that with, with Jehovah God's people. Because he had seen the power of Jehovah God already. You know, but... All of this had frustrated the king's, king's word and yield their bodies and they might not serve nor worship any God except their own Jehovah God. Therefore, I make a decree. Here's, Jehovah, here's Nebuchadnezzar now. He's mad, but not in the Hebrew voice. Therefore, I make a decree that every people nation and language could speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other Jehovah God that can, that can deliver after this sword. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Boy, I'm telling you. I'm going to look out on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But see, yeah. you know, it's, God hasn't forgotten these haters yet. Yeah. You know, when we start looking further, they, they, you know, they're, 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 they're comings up. Yeah, comes up. Yeah. yeah they you know. but, 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 but you cannot frustrate God. <laughs> And what God is doing and thinking you can walk away. Yes. There was a sermon that I prepared years ago. I forgot what it was now. But it was, uh, you can't dance with the devil and then go home. Because yeah. yeah. he will follow you. Yeah. Because he'll follow you. He'll follow you. You can't kiss him in the dog and expect him not to claim you. Well. <laughs> 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 so next week we're going to start off uh, back up on uh, in chapter four. It's good, but what we're leading to, God is about to do something that, oh, that, that really the, the world didn't see it at the time that Daniel was writing it. As a matter of fact, God said, seal it up. So all through history, it's been overlooked and not really paid much attention. And near the latter times, in the latter days, is when God was saying, saying to unseal. Do you see what God did with Daniel as far as opening him, open up his eyes? And even Daniel himself did not understand all of what was being told to him by Gabriel. But it, 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 it was so important that there was a war in heaven with, with angels fighting, trying to keep the messenger from getting to Daniel. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
with the message that God had for Daniel. I'm jumping a little bit ahead, so, you know, we're getting there. It, it gets good, I'm telling you. It gets good. Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you again for the opportunity that you give us to study your word. We pray that as we look through this book of Daniel, that we will see the opportunities uh, for growth and see the opportunities to be sure that we ignore the, uh, the, the, the haters and the naysayers and those that are working against God's plan to understand that God will not tolerate it. God will not allow that to stand, that his purpose will come to fruition no matter what. We pray that uh, you will show us that you will always be here to strengthen us and keep us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. There may be someone tonight who have never heard the gospel message that by the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're brought to salvation. If that message renders any power in your heart tonight, it very well could be that the Holy Spirit is, is knocking at your door, that Jesus himself is knocking at the door of your heart. I would advise you to open your door, open your heart, receive him. You never know what God is wanting. It, 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 it could be a calling, it could be salvation, it could be anything, because God works in beautiful, mysterious ways. My advice is that you would yield. Amen. And if that be the case, especially for salvation, I would ask that you would give us a call here at the church so that we can minister with you and help you further with the with the decision that you will be making in your life. Uh, the number here is 904-356-2359. That's what I want to say. 904-356-2359. And, and let us pray with you. Let us help you. Uh, with that, I uh, want to bless everybody. Have a wonderful evening. And we will see you uh, Sunday. God's will. First Sunday. Uh, stop by the office, Jessica, so I can read your time.